morning. Welcome to Get Active, Rise and Shine. My name is Sam, and thank you very much for tuning in to How to Zen with me and Don. I'll be leading you through today's first half of the segment, as usual, and Don will be covering the second half of the Zen portion. Today's session is a little bit different. We're going to focus on power. Now, power, what is power? Power is our ability to create more explosive movement. Power is ability for us to, to be more proficient and increase performance in general. Power does not mean that we must be able to jump super far or super fast or be able to throw something very, very far as well. Power is very subjective and power is basically a combination of strength and speed. So what we're going to do today in today's power segment is to speed up in our movement a little bit more than usual, just so that we are cultivating and developing power skills. Now, also take note that um, power training allows us to increase the resilience of our joints, so especially our joints, ligaments, and tendons. It allows us to reduce the risk of injuries in our joints, especially if in the case where we sprain our ankles or our other joints. Now, um, now take note of this is that because speed is subjective, so go at your own pace. If you find that I'm going a little bit too fast, then just slow down. And if I'm going a little bit slower than you, just speed up, okay? Now, today's power class also focuses a lot more on lower body. We'll focus on upper body another time. So if you're into upper body explosive movement, then join us and look forward to the next session with us. Now, so like all sessions or like all training sessions, most importantly, before we start explosive training, we need to mobilize and activate all our muscle group just to make sure that everything in our body is ready. All right, so I'm going to start off from our ankles. So first thing first, I'm turning around so you can see me. I'm just going to practice heel raise, okay? So raise your heels up as high as you can and then lower it back down and all the way up and down. We're going to go for 10, 3, and down, up four, and down. So if you're still sitting down, you can practice this, but it'll be great if you'll just stand up. All right, so go all the way up. Make sure you're nice and stable, not wobbling or moving around, and then down. Control the movements as much as you can. If you're not able to control it while you're moving it slowly, then think about the risks involved when you're moving a lot faster. So go nice and slow first, making sure that you're balanced. No oopsie turvy, no moving around, okay? Now you can even try to perform one leg at a time. One leg, okay, last three on here. Two, one, and then I'm gonna perform on the other side as well. Three, two, and one. Okay, so those are heel raise. I'm gonna add a bonus as well. So go into the kneeling position, okay? Have your toes pointing back so you're kinda like sitting on your heels. And then from here, lean back a little bit so you can feel a little bit more stretch. If you can raise your knees up like what I'm doing right now, do that. That means your ankle is a little bit more flexible. Okay, if your knees are relatively lower to the ground, it's normal. Okay, so going forward and back just to feel the stretch across your ankles. Okay, lean back if you can. Forward and back. Just get a good stretch across the ankles. If you hear a pop, it just means that there's a release of tension in the joint. Okay, last three. Two. And one, okay? So that's a bonus. Now we're gonna go to knee bends. So you can lean over, horn to your knees, go down to a squat as low as you can. You can feel some cracking, popping. It's quite common nowadays. It may not be normal, but it's quite common. Okay, especially with the tense muscles been sitting around too long or been working out too much, running too much without stretching, okay? So going to knee bends, focus on bending your knees. You can add on some rotations as well, but we'll do that a little bit later. But going down and up. Again, we want to make sure that we are in control of the movement so there is no shaking, um, twitching, or even imbalance, okay? So some of the common imbalance that I've seen is you might be leaning forward like this with one knee going forward, okay? So make sure both sides are balanced. Last three. We're going 10 per movement. Two. And one. Okay. And then coming back up. Now, then we're going to go into deep squat. So you will go down to a squat as low as you're comfortable with. Okay. So going down. Allow your knees to go forward and all back naturally. Now, as long as you pivot your feet under the ground and making sure that you're balanced all the time, 
Okay, then you know that you're in a good state. Going how deep you want to, and then coming back up to a stand. If you find that as you go down to a squat, your heel starts to pop up, then your knee starts to go forward and body starts to go forward, then just shift back a little bit, make, it, make sure that your feet is stable, adjust, find the center balance, and then come back up to a stand. Okay? It is not a must for you to go into a deep, deep, deep squat, but it will be beneficial for your joints as well as your digestive system because once we're in the deep squat position, it kind of like push our stomach in, okay? So that's why those days when there used to be a lot more squatting toilet, it's a lot, the, the, the situations in the toilets are usually a little bit better, okay? Coming up and then going back down. Again, we have 10 reps per movement. We're almost done already. So going down to a deep squat, shift, weight shift, move your knees, move your hip if you want to. Last two, going down deep and stand. And one last one, going down deep and stand. Okay, so we're gonna go into today's power training. I'll explain the movement as we go through. Keynote is that if you have any issues, challenge, and you need scaling or modification, again, just leave a comment for us and then we'll try to reply to you as quickly as we can. And then number two is that over the three rounds, I'm going to go from the most basic and then to a little bit more challenging. Not the most advanced, but just a little bit more challenging. So if you like yourself to be challenged, then stay tuned for the third round. The first round is a basic power or uh, speed work movement, okay? We have three common movements today, squat jumps, and then we're going to go into jumping lunges, and then we're going to go to uh, lateral squats as well, okay? So let's get started. Again, we have 10 reps each, so I'm going to start off squat jumps with quarter squats. So quarter squat is when my thighs, okay, it's about 45 degrees, and then I'll come back up to a standing position with a jump off. How high you want to jump, it's up to you. If you can jump super duper high, do that. If not, just a little hop off the ground is great. But the keynote over here is that we want to utilize our buttocks as much as we can. So as you go into the jump, I want you to jump as straight tall up as possible. So just watch this going down quarter and squat jump. Jump and jump. Okay, we have 10 to go. Let's get going. All right, so quarter jumps, ready, and let's go. Quarter, and up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. That easy, okay? So I hope you notice that when I am jumping off the ground, my body goes as vertically um, possible as, as I can. The whole idea is that I want to make sure that I'm using my hip joint to create that power to push off from the ground. Okay, now we're going to go into lunges. And the lunge that we're going to work on today looks kind of like, like this. Okay, so this is kind of like the setup. So from here, making sure the shoulder is over hip and then your hip is over your knee. This will be our stable position. We're going to push off from the ground first. Again, maintain a quarter, uh, 45 degree angle position. Now, the push-off that we're going to do today, you're going to use your heels and your toes at the same time, push, and then return. Okay, so it's like one-legged jump, um, but you're going to work on balancing at the same time. Okay, so you'll push off and return, push off and return, push off and return. Okay, so 45 degrees, push off and return. We have 10 on each side. Okay, so get ready. Are you ready? And let's go. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Okay. So you might not feel the burn. You may feel the burn, but key key thing over here is try to be as explosive as possible. Um, try to be as balanced as possible at the same time. Okay. Switch side. Go into lunge position. Knee on top of your ankle. Shoulders over hips, over knee. So this is a nice, solid, stable setup position. Push your body off the ground. Front leg is about 45 degrees. Your shoulder is still on top of your hip all the time. Okay, and then get ready. We're going to go for 10 reps from now. Ready, and let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six, 
seven, eight, nine, and 10. Okay, so single leg push off in the lunging position just to get us started. All right, now, then we're gonna go into um, lateral squats or side to side squats. So we're gonna walk on one side first. The movement kind of like look like this. You're gonna go down. Again, we maintain 45 degrees, okay? Later on, we're going to half. Later on, we're gonna go full range. So from a 45 degree angle, what I want you to do is push off, tap, and then return. Push off, and then return. Point to note over here is that this is not a weight shift, so I will want you to, to go into a weight shift to bring your body up. You want to execute a push off from the legs. Use your buttocks, use your glutes, use your hamstrings, use your quads. Push off through the ground to bring your body back up into a position. All right? 10 to go. 45 degree angles on the thighs. Ready and up one. Oops, sorry. And two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Okay. Over to the other side. This way. Okay. Remember, push off. All right. So ready and let's go. One, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. If you're watching me on the bus or the MRT train, you'll find that this is super useful as well. In case the bus or the train jerks a little bit, then you can stabilize yourself. Okay? All right, now we're going to move on back to round number two. Squat jump, but this time round, we're going to challenge to go halfway. So bring your pockets to your knee level, and then you will go into an extension or standing, followed by a jump off. Again, we want to see the body standing nice and tall, bring your pockets back into position. So kind of like look like this. Half squat, and then jump. Half squat, jump. Half squat, and jump. 10 reps to go. Let's get ready. We do it together. Three, two, one, and let's go. Half squat, jump. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Okay, so we got half squat jump, progression from the quarter squat jump that we've done earlier. Once again, how high you can jump, it's very subjective. So you can jump super duper high, do that. If you find that your knees, your ankles are not the most comfortable, just focus on standing up fast. You may not pop off the ground, but going fast is good enough. Now we're gonna go into lunges. So again, we're gonna go back to the setup. Shoulders over the hip, once again, hips is on top of your knee. Lunge tall, go into high kneeling position. And then, this is the setup position, okay? Now, the challenge over here is that I'd like you to go to bring your knee as close to the ground as possible before that push off happens. So if you find yourself pushing back, good. If not, knee touch up, knee touch up, and knee touch up. Okay, so that's what we're looking for for today. All right, so get ready. Going to set up. Knees on contact with the ground for now. 10 reps to go. I would not be going back to a standing position, but if you need to recover yourself, you can always go back into a standing position. Okay, ready? Three, two, one, and let's go. One, knee to ground. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Okay, so try to be intentional, be mindful, landing, stable, and then push off. All right? Switch side. High kneeling position. Again, check your position. Knees on top of ankle, shoulders always upright. So you're always in the nice, solid, firm 
posture. All right? Now, from here, go for 10, 3, 2, 1, and let's go. 1, 2, 3, 4, knee to ground, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Okay, is it working? All right, so have that. If you want to take a little break, like what we did earlier, just come back up to a stand. If not, you can stay on pauses, okay? Now, then we're going to go into lateral squats. So again, from here, I'm going to go sideways. Now, instead of a quarter squat, we're going to go half and then push off, okay? And again, if you want to recover, you just come go, go to a standing position or else just get in and then go back out. Remember, try not to weight shift. Push off as much as you can. 10 reps to go. Get ready. Half squats this time. Three, two, one, and let's go. Half squat and push off. One, two, half squat, push off. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Okay. Over onto the other side. Just a quick intermission. I hope you guys are all smiling because this is supposed to be a fun workout. So don't look too serious. If you're on the train or on a bus on the way to work, just smile looking at me. It should be a lot more positive, you know? Yeah, okay, now we're gonna switch over to the other side. Half squat all the way, all right? Ready, and go half squat, and push off. One, two, smile, three, you can giggle, four, five, half squat down, six, seven, you know the drill, I'm going through already, so you don't have to keep looking at me, you can look up, smile at the person beside you, have a quick chit chat at the same time. And 10. Okay, so those are lateral squats. We're gonna go into the third round. So as I mentioned earlier, third round, we go a little bit more challenging. It's not advanced, it's just a little bit more challenging. Okay, so we're gonna go back to squat jumps this time round. Full squat, deep squat, jump as high as you can. Okay, you can choose to pause at the bottom, or no pause. Touch and go, touch and go, all right? 10 reps, kind of like look like that. So take a breather, watch me first. Deep squat, jump up tall. Deep squat, jump up tall. Okay, use your arm swing to balance and uh, help you. All right, let's go. Three, two, one, and let's go. Full squat down and up. One, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Okay, so what happens after vertical jump? Broad jump, side jump, rotational or twist jump can happen as well. But these are the fundamentals of um, power training. Okay, now we're gonna go into lunges and for jumping lunges in this round, we're literally going to switch leg. So the movement looks like this. Again, going to a setup position. I will want your knee to be on the ground. If not, you can maintain that 45 degree angle hold. From here, you're going to go up, switch on to the other side, lower a knee down, yes, and smile. Okay, and then up, switch side, and down. Ten aside. Breathe along the way. If you can maintain the tempo, stay with me. If not, go at your own pace. You'll be able to catch up with me in a while. Okay, so I'm gonna start with my left foot forward first, and I'm gonna finish with my right. Okay, three, two, one, let's go. One, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and done. All right, so 
Just a gentle reminder, if you find that lowering your knee down to touch the ground is a little bit challenging, then stay with a 45 degree angle, balance, pop, switch side, stay on 45 degrees, okay? Last one that we have, uh, side to side squats, lateral squats. So we're gonna go into a deep end, squat range, push off, and then get back into position. Okay, so get ready, just watch first. Full squat down. If you need your hand on the ground, do that. Because we want to cultivate good range of motion for the heels and the knees. So just get yourself down and then back up into position. Okay? 10 reps on each side. And then today's power training with Sam is done. You can look forward to a little bit more power training with Dawn. Okay? So standby reading. Three, two, one, and let's go. Full squat down and up. One, two, three. So notice I'm only doing a little bit of a toe touch and then get back down. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Good job. Virtual high five. Okay, we're gonna switch side. On this side right now, again, full squat down, push yourself back up. Last 10 reps for Sam's or Uncle Sam's segment. Okay, ready? Three, two, one, and let's go. Full squat down and up. Touch and return. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Okay, so all done. So we worked a little bit on frontal, front and, front and back. We worked a little bit on alternating. So forcing the body or challenging the body to work on two different dimensions at the same time. And then we've also worked on side to side. So the other areas that we can explore in time to come, like I mentioned earlier, rotation, twisting, okay? And even shorter, more explosive range, okay? We'll keep this or those for the future episodes to come. In the meantime, after all the movement, what I'd like you to do is just stand, rotate your hip out, and stretch, okay? so. Draw a big circle with your knee, going out. Try five on each side. If you need more, go ahead. The other side, five, four, three, two, and one. Okay, and one more stretch for you before we go. Okay, go into a sit-up position. Space, in, space your feet out. You're gonna drop your knees side to side. Try to be able to see a 90 degree band on the front knee, 90 degree band on the back knee. Keep your body upright. Hold it and stretch. Sit upright, sit tall. Feel the stretch across inside the hip socket. Okay, if you find that it's easy, then just simply come up to a sit without supporting with your hands. Okay, and then switch over to the other side. Stay seated. Hold it there. Breathe, balance. If you cannot, then just put your hands behind and chill. Okay. Alrighty. Now, that's all I have for you today. I'm going to hand over to Dawn, so stay tuned. Get a cup of water, quick sip, hydrate yourself, wipe yourself down. Dawn will, Dawn will be with you in a moment. See you guys.
welcome back, everyone. I hope you managed to get a sip of water, towel down. As you can see from the description, uh, we did ask you to bring along a towel. So do have it handy because um, you will hopefully be able to sweat a lot more today uh, as compared to previous weeks. So do stay hydrated also, okay? I'm going to be taking over the second part right now and we are going to do no impact uh, with the movements that we're doing here today. I'm going to have you started at the front of your mat. We're going to go through a full body workout. Uh, for my segment, all right? And we're going to come towards the front with our feet together. Now, remember, we try to move at a pace of our breathing. So every inhale, all right, is going to be full. Every exhale as well. Do not rush through it. Let the end of your movement be the end of your breath, all right? So arms by the side. We're going to take an inhale, reaching both arms up. Feel that stretch along the front side of the body. And as you exhale, bend your knees for those of you who have issues with your lower back, all right? Now, as you inhale, look forwards. Exhale, I'd like you to come into a fold. Now, right leg goes back. Inhale, left leg goes back. This is the option for those of you who do not want to be jumping, okay? Now, lower your knees, lean forwards, chest, chin. This is the option for those of you working uh, with an easier option as well, all right? Coming into your cobra or your high cobra. Tuck your toes, come into downward facing. So, I'll go through the easier options first. Now, look forwards, right foot steps in, and then left foot follows. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, coming up all the way. Hands to heart center. Let's repeat that. Inhale. I'll give you options now. Exhale, fold forwards. Halfway lift. Inhale. Forward fold. Exhale. You can step back or you can jump back. Lowering down. Knees off is harder. Press forwards and up. And as you exhale, if you can, roll over those toes. Come into down dog. Look forwards. One foot forwards. Other foot follows. Forward fold. Inhale. Coming up all the way. Let's repeat this two more times, okay? Inhale, reach up. Exhale, we fold. Halfway lift. Inhale, forward fold. Exhale, you either step or you jump. Lowering down, press. Forwards and up, push lift. Exhale, downward facing dog. Looking forwards, step one foot in between the hands. Guide it forwards if you need to. Other foot follows. Inhale, coming up all the way. Hands to heart center. Let's do this one last time. Inhale, take a deep breath. Exhale, fold. Bend your knees, remember, if you have to. Inhale, look forwards. Exhale, fold. Step or jump back. Lowering down, press. Forwards and up. Look up. Exhale, downward facing dog. Last time to step forwards, right foot and then left foot follows. Feet to the front, forward fold. Inhale, coming up all the way and let's come into your first pose here, all right? One of my favorites. We'll glue the feet together. We'll have the inside edges of your feet come together as well. Arms forwards and then we rise up on tippy toes. So if you have ankle issues, um, please feel free to keep your heels down on the ground instead. But I'd like you to come into a lower sit. So you should feel the front of your thighs really working very hard here. I'm going to hold it here for another one more breath. So the difference between today's practice and normal days is I'm going to keep repeating the same pose again. We're going to stay for a shorter duration. Next pose coming up, we come into your warrior three. Option, arms out to the side. And if you can, arms towards the front. Let's hold it here for two more breaths. One more breath. And then let's lower the back foot down onto tiptoe. Coming into your crescent lunge, lower your hips. So staying down low, take an inhale, breathe deep. Exhale. I will come back to these poses again. So um, the key today, the focus today is really to work a little bit more um, on power or strength and your cardiovascular system at the same time, all right? So I'm going to have you have your hands come down now and let's step back. Option one, you're going to come onto your both feet and then you're going to lower your knees down. Option two, I'd like you to raise your right foot up. We're going to lean forwards, bend your elbows and then press forwards and up. Push to lift, and if you're coming into your up dog, thighs off the ground, okay? Exhale, downward facing. And let's stay here for three deep breaths. Holding it here, I want you to press more into your index finger. Finger pads, your knuckles. So do not let the weight just rest onto your wrists, okay? Looking forward, right foot steps in, left foot follows, feet to the front, forward fall. Inhale, coming up all the way with a baby back bend. Hands to heart center. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. Take your arms forwards and lower the hips down. 
Once again, raise the heels up. So round by round, as you come back to that same movement again, you should be able to go a little bit further. There's no need to worry about coordination, not that we are doing a lot of um, complex movements here. One more breath here. All right, heels coming down. Right foot this time, steps back. We'll keep the left foot in front. Arms extending up, lower your hips down towards the ground. You notice that I'm trying to get my heel really high over the toes for the back foot. Arms extending up, I'm going to try to breathe more deeply towards the lower lung lobes around the ribs. We're going to hold it here for just one more breath and we'll come back to this again. All right, ah, I forgot this one here. Arms out to the side, warrior three. Stay right here. You can always have your big toe come touch the ground for those of you who need an option uh, to make it easier for yourselves. All right? And then remember, the other option is to have your arms come forwards as well. Holding it there for just one more breath. So like I said, we're staying for a shorter period of time. Hands coming down, let's step back into down dog or three-legged dog if you're working harder. All right? Inhale. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, press forwards and up. And exhale, downward facing. Let's stay here for three more breaths once again. So I'm going to add on new poses the next round. But these movements that you've just done, you try and work a little bit harder. You try and push yourself a little bit deeper into the poses. All right, holding here for just one last breath. And then we'll always come back to down dog. Uh, to come and recheck on our breathing if it has started to shorten, right? Now let's take a step forward. Other leg comes in as well. Forward fold. Inhale, coming up all the way with the baby back bend, hands to heart center. Have your feet come together once more. Arms forward, take a seat. Lower the hips down. Option again, raise the heels up for another three. So every time I come into the same pose again, or every time I hold a pose, I'm going to hold it there for about four breaths. At the end of today's practice, you probably would have done about maybe four rounds, right? three to four rounds. If you want to go for another round on your own, feel free to as well. Right? And lower the heels down. We're going to stay on your right leg, arms out to the side, straightening both legs out. So it's different from when we hold it. Uh, non-stop for eight breaths or even 16 breaths, perhaps, you'll start to shiver a lot if you hold it non-stop. But here, I can actually push myself a bit farther and I'm still going to stay for a total of 16 breaths, perhaps, if I do this for four rounds, right? One more breath here. All right, tiptoe, touch down. Arms reaching up, lower the hips down. So now that my joints, my muscles are much more warmed up and I come back to the same pose, I can actually go a lot further, all right? Holding it here for another two. Every time I exhale, I'm trying to say HA, mouth is closed. So I switch on my inner core muscles more. All right, hands coming down. I'm going to add on one more pose here. I'm going to take my right leg back. I'm going to turn towards my left side, right? So right leg goes back, turn to the left. My right leg is at the bottom. Option one, foot on top of foot. Option two, top leg comes up. And maybe you might even want to have your two fingers hook onto the big toe and bring that leg up. But that's up to you, right? We're going to hold it here for just one more breath. All right, let's come on down. You can always have your both legs down to the ground or right foot off, lower it down. Press forwards and up, push, lift, and exhale, downward facing. Three more breaths here. Of course, fatigue is a very real thing, especially if you followed um, Sam earlier for the first half of today's practice as well. So if you need to, please come into child's pose every time we are here. All right, look forwards. Right foot steps in. Left foot follows, feet to the front, forward fold. Inhale, coming up all the way, hands to heart center. Other side, same sequence, arms to the front, take a seat. Lower the hips back and down, option again, raise the heels off the ground for three and two. So find a focal point, every time it requires you to balance, find a focal point. It helps you balance with a lot more ease, all right? Heels coming down, arms to the side. This time, left foot stays, right leg goes back and up. Of course, you can always have your arms reaching forward to make it slightly more challenging, all right? And just two more breaths to make it four. One more, make sure you're not holding your breath, okay? 
All right, back foot, tiptoe, touch down. I'm going to stay high on tiptoe for the back foot. Arms reaching up, lower the hips down. All right, I'm going to make sure that my inner uh, baby crunching muscles are still switched on. Find your focal point once again. This is quite a, a pose to challenge your balancing muscles for some people, especially if you just got started. I'm going to slowly lower both hands down towards the ground now. And this time, I'm going to turn towards my right side. So my left arm is at the bottom, working. I'm pushing strongly into the shoulders. And then bottom leg as well. All right, I'm going to press it strongly into the outside edge of the foot. Option is to raise that top leg up. So I look like a star from the back all right, or the front. Holding it here for just two more breaths. Avoid sinking your hips down towards the ground. Okay, One more breath here. And then very slowly, lower the hand, lower the foot down. Option, lower your knees to the floor to make it easier. All right? Inhale, come forwards. Exhale, lower down. Press forwards and up. Push to lift. And then exhale. Let's come into that downward facing dog once again. And then we'll hold it here for another two more breaths. Of course, those of you who need to, you can go rest in child's pose. All right? Last breath here. So if you are resting in child's pose, come join us in down dog. Look forwards, stepping forwards, one foot, other leg follows, feet to the front, forward fold. Inhale, coming up all the way, and hands to heart center. I only have two more add-ons here, right? Arms reaching forwards, take a seat. Option, lift your heels up once again. Stay right there, and then find your focal point. Knees are together, thighs are together. Shoulders are relaxed. One more breath here. Okay, lower your heels down. Arms out to the side, straighten both legs out. From the side, my body, my legs look like a number seven. Left leg goes up and back. Option, arms to the front. Find your focal point right on the ground so that you do not start to compress the back of your neck. If you look forwards, you'll tend to do that. Okay, back leg, tiptoe, touch down. Arms reaching up, lower your hips, back to your high lunge. So if you've counted how many rounds you've done this, you probably would have done it for at least 12 rounds already. By the end of the day, if you're not taking a break, you would have done 40, uh, 16. All right, hold it here. One more breath. Relax your shoulders. All right, hands coming back down. I'm going to go back, turn towards my left side. So it's my right arm that's working. It's my left leg that goes up. And if you want to work harder, you have your foot getting hooked. All right, I'm going to stay here for one more breath before we go on to the next pose. So if you're hooking onto your foot, great. Bring it towards the front on the left side of your mat. If you did not float your, if you did not hook your foot, you just bring the foot towards the front as well, like so. Right? So just bring the left foot towards the front of your mat where your left hand will be. We're going to make sure that the back leg is on tiptoe, whether you're lowering the knee down, which is easier or not. So if you can, you're going to lower your chest closer towards the ground. And if you can, you're going to rest down on your forearms. And if you can, arms out to the side, you fly the lizard. So this challenges the muscles in your core a lot. Let's hold it here for just two more breaths. One more breath. All right, hands coming down. One last add-on here, we're going to take your left leg up and back into three-legged dog. But I'm going to bend that knee and twist. Now, you can bring that leg back behind you more, 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 more and stop here. Or you go ahead and finish off that flip and extend your top arm back. Hold it here for another three. So push strongly into your arm that supports you. That makes sure that the muscles around the shoulders stay engaged. One more breath here. All right, slowly coming back. Pivot on your right foot. Take that left leg up and lower back down to downward facing. So if you want to rest here, you can. If not, one straight line. Lower down. Press forwards and up. And then exhale, downward facing dog. Three breaths here. So if you want to rest in child's pose, please go ahead. All right, listen to your body. At no point in time do we hold our breath. All right, the moment you do, your body's telling you, please let me have a rest. All right, if not, you're going to create more tension. Look forwards. Right foot steps in. Left foot follows. Feet to the front. Forward fold. Inhale. Coming up all the way. 
hence the heart center. Let's do this one more time on the other side, right? Arms towards the front, take a seat. Feet together, knees together, big toes touch. Lift your heels up if you're working hard, right? So try to make sure that you're not holding your breath already. This is the last round on this side, okay? But throughout, I want you to be mindful of your breathing. One more breath here. Okay, heels down, legs straight, arms out. Left foot stays, right leg goes back. Hold it out here. Option, arms forwards for two, for one. Okay, back foot, tiptoe, touch down. Arms reaching up, lower your hips. Breathe deep to the bigger lung lobes. Exhale, engage the inner weight training belt, the inner corset. For two more breaths here, right? Strong in the legs, energize that back leg a lot. One more breath here. All right, hands coming down. Let's take your left leg back. We're gonna turn towards the other side now, right? Left arm stays. We're gonna turn towards your right side. Option, your top leg can come up and maybe even hook under the big toe, right? So um, just see what works best for you. So if you need to just uh, keep your top foot on the ground as well, that can work, all right? Let's hold it here for just one more breath and then get ready, that top leg, you're gonna bring it towards the front where your right hand would be. Both hands down, stay on tiptoe for the back leg. If you need to, knee comes down, okay? And if possible, come onto your forearms. And if your body allows you to, arms extend out to the side, fly your lizard. Those of you who can bind, you go into your bind as well. All right, so I'm going to hold it there for another two. And one. All right, hands coming back down. Get ready. Right leg, pick it up. Three-legged dog. Bend that knee. Twist, twist, twist. You might want to hold it here. Or lower the foot down all the way. And then extend your right arm up and back. Stay right here, make sure you're pushing into the ground strongly with the arm that supports you. All right, hold there for just one more deep breath. Okay, let's come back. Pivot on your left foot. Turn, right leg goes up, lower it down. Option, you flow from here. If not, you take your left leg off the ground, inhale. This is the last time we're doing this. Lean forwards, bend your elbows, press forwards and up. Exhale. Downward facing, hold it here for last three breaths. And two, so on and off, we always stop for a bit to reset the breathing if it has started to shorten. One more breath here. Okay, lower your knees down towards the ground and take a seat. Rotate around your wrist. I'm going to have you breathing normal now, right? In and out through your nose, you don't have to... Um, try to switch on your inner corset so much. You don't have to try and switch on your inner weight training belt so much because the movements that we do now are going to be more um, stretchy in nature, more relaxed in nature. I'm going to have you come into a kneeling position. So for those of you who have your towel handy with you, you may want to have it um, padding under your knees at this point. All right? I'm going to have you have your left foot stay, uh, sorry, your left knee stay. And then your right leg comes forwards. If you're finding you're losing your balance already, just hold onto the table, hold onto the chair, hold onto the wall for balance. I'm going to stretch that front foot further forward. So wiggle, wiggle, wiggle towards the front. And then point your toes up towards the ceiling. Lean forwards and down. So if you can catch the floor like I am, great. If you cannot, like I said earlier, just go ahead and grab hold um, of a chair or a table or the wall for balance, right? Toes point up, I'm gonna melt my chest closer towards my thigh. Your body is way more supple now. Your muscles, your joints are way more supple now, right? So you should be getting a much better stretch um, at this point than if you were to do something like that at the beginning of a practice, right? So save the stretchy parts uh, for later, right? Hold it there for just two more deep breaths. One more. Okay, and slowly coming back up. Now I'm gonna have that front knee bending. I'm gonna shift my weight forwards and bend that knee. This is my right leg. So I'm gonna place my right hand on the inner foot side. The back leg is gonna go towards the right. All right, so I didn't bring it to the front, I brought it behind me. And now my left arm goes up. So I feel a good inner thigh stretch happening on the bent leg side. All right, looking up, I'm gonna feel that stretch 
along the left side of my torso as well, especially if I start to bring that arm overhead. Right? We're just going to keep it here for today. Right? Holding it here, I'm going to use my arm to push that knee backwards so I feel that inner thigh stretch that I'm trying to achieve here. All right, slowly lower both hands down. Once again, I'm going to return the back leg to the center. Step back, we're going to do exactly the same thing on the other side. Right? So walk your hands back one step, slide your right leg back, and then step your left foot forwards. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle towards the front. Once you're ready, straighten that front leg. Chest leads the way down towards the thigh, okay? So both hands are down and melt the chest closer towards your thigh. Forehead towards your knee. Stay right there for another two. Another one. And shift the weight forwards. Leg that's behind, I'm going to bring it back behind me, all right? Fingers coming down or hand coming down. Other arm goes up. We're going to hold it here for four. Three, use the arm that's at the bottom to push against that thigh, okay? One more breath here. All right, both hands coming down. I'm going to return the back leg towards the center and then I'm going to step back, both knees side by side and lower it down. Now from here, I'm just going to come and face you, right? So we will have one leg on top of the other. It doesn't matter which one because I'm just going to have you change it around um, later on, right? So I'm going to start off with my right leg at the bottom and my left leg on top. If you cannot have your knees one on top of the other, then you just sit in whichever way where you'll still feel that stretch along the outside of that top leg, right? So if you can, knee over knee. Cannot, just go as far as your body allows you to. Right, so at this point, I'm going to try to level out my hips, right and left side, holding it here. You're already going to feel that stretch along the outside of whichever leg is on top, along the, the outside of your hips, right? Now, take a deep breath here. And as you exhale, start to walk your hands closer towards the front. So if your chest can come closer towards your thigh, great. Cannot, never mind. Huh? Just try not to round your back or drop your head um, towards your knee in order to, to achieve this. Right? So just make sure that you're not um, holding your breath or shallow breathing as well. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. Walk your hands back and let's switch it over. This time I'm going to have my left leg on top. Right leg on over, uh, sorry, left leg under, right leg over, and then adjust yourselves so that both sides of your hips are more level. All right, take an inhale to sit up as tall as you can, and then if it's possible for you, walk it forwards for four. So, of course, if you can go down much lower, go for it. If, and, and for many of you, if seated upright is as far as you want to go for today, but you already feel a good stretch, that's just how it's going to look like for you for now. There will never be a one-size-fits-all, right? So um, put aside that notion that you need to look a certain way in order to get the full benefits, but listen to your body more. Make sure that you can feel the benefits um, versus trying to look like uh, a perfect picture, right? And very slowly coming back up. I'm going to go for a spine twist, but an easy one. So I'd like you to come into a regular cross-leg sit. It doesn't matter which leg is in front. We're going to change it around later, all right? I'm going to have your right arm come outside your left knee. Keep that arm straight, okay? And sit up tall. Other arm goes behind you to support you like a second spine. And you're going to twist, pushing against the outside of your thigh or your knee. Look back. Now, remember, I've mentioned this so many times. Your neck is an extension of your spine. So when you twist, include that rotation around the neck as well. And that's why we're trying to look back. Holding it here for just one more breath. Now I'm going to have you come back towards the center. And let's change it over. Other side, left arm outside the right thigh. Sitting up tall, look back towards the wall behind you. All right, so try not to scrunch your shoulders up towards the ears while you're doing this also. Sometimes we try too hard and we start to um, tense up the stress muscles. All right, so be, no, be conscious of that. One more breath here. All right, and very slowly coming back towards the center. I'd like to finish today's practice off with a very simple breathing method. All right? um, in fact, when I teach kids, when I teach my kids this as well, um, it just helps everybody just calm down really quickly. All right? But I need you to watch first. Don't follow me yet because you probably won't be able to hear me um, once you have your thumb pressing against your ear. All right? So there is a cartilage between our cheek and our ear 
which I want you to use your thumb to press against. Now that frees up your four fingers, right? And, and for many people, what they like to do is also use the four fingers to cover your eyes, okay? Because once we take the attention away, the visual, um, your sight, your vision, um, and we also kind of press it, the cartilage down, it also blocks off your sense of hearing. And when you do that, you become more conscious of everything else that's happening inside. Experiment that and see how it is for you. So if you can, cover your eyes as well with your four fingers, but I do want you to have your thumbs with gentle pressure pressing down on the cartilage, right? But what you're going to do here is a natural inhale. And when you exhale, you're going to separate your teeth. You're going to do a humming sound. Hmm, until you kind of run out of breath, okay? We're going to do that together just two times, right? On your own, do it up to eight, ten times even. And in doing that, it slows down your rate of breathing and it calms you down as well. So people who suffer from anxiety, panic, stress, this helps you out a lot, okay? And it, and it does the trick so quickly. Two times is all it takes, right? So give yourself a thumbs up for trying it out. Press onto the cartilage. Take a deep inhale. Exhale. Release one more time. Maybe cover your eyes. Inhale. Exhale. And relax. Thank you so much again for joining myself and Sam this morning for Power to Zen on Get Active TV. We hope to see you all again very soon. Have a very happy midweek, everybody. Bye.